Hi, and welcome to another one of my vintage iFi videos. I will now talk quite a bit slower than normal, as a few people have commented recently and in the past on previous videos I've done on this channel a few years back that they are having trouble understanding what I say due to my accent. So hopefully talking a bit slower will help them and other people understand what I am going on about. Unfortunately this will make the video a bit longer. Today I will be replacing the capacitors in these Celestial Ditton speakers that I bought a few days ago. Well actually, yes, just a few days ago as the capacitors arrived today, next day of delivery. I've already replaced them but I'm going to go over what I actually did. Just in case you want to replace any capacitors in your crossover circuits in any of your speakers. Now, it's a thing you should maybe think about. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you take them out, replace them with some new ones. You can always take the new ones out and put the old ones back. Obviously, a little bit time consuming. But as these were cheap, they still sounded fine. I thought I'd do that. It would help me show a few other people on how to do it and puts another video on the channel and just for a matter of interested interest for myself to see what the sound difference was in the end. So the capacitors in this speaker are actually made by Pi quite a few years ago, about 50 years ago, and they're 12 microfarads at 50 volt. And the replacements that come today were 12 microfarads at 100 volts, which is okay for the replacement as long as they're the same microfarads. As you can see they are a lot smaller, probably one quarter the size of the original capacitors due to capacitor technology being a lot more advanced than it was 50 years ago. Now these sound it's fine even with these capacitors in but it was just a, a matter of curiosity and put in another video on the channel that I thought I'd do this. The first thing I did was take the actual back off, but unfortunately undoing the screws of the back where the uh, crossover is attached to the uh, back terminals, the nuts hold it into the case, fall down into the case, so putting it back would have been nigh and impossible without taking this front speaker or passive speaker off, which has no wires connected it to it at all, so fairly safe. You won't muck up anything doing that. Obviously, if you've got a speaker that's got wires, you know, if you had a three-way speaker and you needed to take the front speaker off, just be careful taking it out. You don't pull the wires too much. It's not the end of the world because you can always re-solder the wires, but it does save that little bit of hassle. Just take it out gently and lay it next to the speaker on the surface. Obviously, make sure the surface is flat. You've got nothing there that could damage the speaker. So on taking this speaker out, which is four screws, a little bit of prizing, it finally pops out. And as you can see, there's a picture of the crossover now on the screen. And these are the two points we want to unsolder or just clip, unclip, clip off, cut with a pair of wire cutters, which in this case was the easier option. So after unclipping it, we're left with this and this. So I positioned the new capacitor in its place, soldered it on, making sure I had a nice good fixing of solder and just placing it back into the enclosure of the speakers. And there you can see where I have two nuts come undone from the wood that I needed to holding position while tightening the nuts with the actual bolts from the rear of the speaker and once that's all done it's all back in place and for good measure I tighten these two screws here which hold the terminal 
um, wire connections on to the speaker uh, crossover. They were just a little bit loose. One, I think I've done about half a turn and one about three quarters of a turn to get it nice and tight. So there you have it, all back with the foam back in place and one speaker done. And I've done pretty much the same with the other speaker. So that brings us back, put the front back on and we're back to how we were. So did I notice a difference between these old capacitors and the new ones? Well, first of all, I thought I would measure the old capacitors to see what their capacitance was. And they read near enough two microfarads apart. One measured 11.68 microfarads and the other measured 13.66. So nearly two microfarads difference between the pair. The new capacitors are measured and even though they're rated at 12 microfarads, they measured 13.44 microfarads and 13.46 microfarads. So pretty much a matched pair. I still have two spare ones here. It was just cheaper for me to order four with next day postage than to just order two. Well, say cheaper, it works up a couple of pennies more, but it just means I've got two extra capacitors for just a couple of pence. So there you go, just a, a video there just to show you how easy it is to change the capacitors in your crossover. As for the sound difference, to be honest with you, I felt it just a little bit tighter on the bass, which was already pretty tight anyway on these speakers. Other than that, I did not notice much more difference. There may have been an inkling of more treble. There may have not been. I, I, it's really hard to tell. You listen to one record and another, then you you try and remember how it was, and you listen to it again with the new capacitors, and obviously your hearing changes anyway, and whatever. I try to sit exactly the same position, and it, there wasn't hardly anything in it. So whether it was actually worth doing this or not, I don't know. I wouldn't say it was a vast difference, but saying that, you may have some speakers that sound pretty bad or you think may just need changing. So, um, yeah, maybe something to think about. But I find that, personally myself, that, and, and, and talking to a couple of people, like mates of mine that, that you know, deal in electronics, maybe just a bit more than me, that they say these low, you know, anything with these low voltage capacitors, um, not capacitors not in power supplies, they don't seem to go as quick as capacitors in power supplies, even though they're quite old, so, and depending on how they were made in the first place. So yeah, maybe worth a go, maybe not, I don't know, but I just thought it'd be another video for the channel and just give you an idea of how to change them and how straightforward it actually is, just with a normal soldering iron, a bit of solder, and a pair of clippers. I could have unwound the wires, but it was just easier just to literally just clip the other ones off and just attach the new ones. I shall keep these old ones just in case at any stage I decided to put them back and keep them speakers exactly the original as they were from day one. Okay, I'll say thank you for watching and I'll see you all soon with another new video. Until then, goodbye.